Now let's talk real quickly about negative keyword strategy. Now you already know what negative keywords are probably if you studied the keyword science module. They're essentially words that we can subtract from our keyword list or grouping or match types. So ads don't become triggered and don't show if those negative keywords are listed. So if we you know, have baseball bats as a keyword, but we don't want someone searching for cheap baseball bats, we could use the word cheap as a negative keyword that we would add inside AdWords. And I'm gonna show you how to add all this, but we could add the word cheap for the negative and we would never have an ad triggered if someone searched for like cheap baseball bats. Um, they could search for other thing baseball bats depending on how our ad group is set up with the regular keyword match type. But it allows us to add words uh, in order to reduce the number of keywords that the ads will be triggered for. But there are two important strategic reasons for using negative keywords. So the first reason is to eliminate negative impact words, which is kind of like the example I just gave, cheap, free, things like that. We may wanna add those as negative keywords so our ads aren't shown for people searching with those words because we know that they're not gonna be good for our business and won't convert, et cetera. But the second reason, which I'm gonna explain in this lesson, is to shape and to optimize our ad groups. And I'll explain how that works. So negative impact keywords, we've already kind of discussed this. I'll go over it a little bit again real quick. They're words or phrases that would yield a negative impact for a business where they'd lower our conversion rates, they're the wrong type of customer, et cetera, et cetera. So we don't wanna pay for these ads to be displayed and for those clicks because they're most likely not gonna be the clicks that we want. So for example, here are some different types of keywords and there could be thousands of these negative impact keywords. But the word free, for example, you know, if you're selling a certain product and someone's searching for free and then that type of product, you know, in rare circumstances, they may still end up buying the thing they're searching for. But typically, if someone's searching with the word free, they're not gonna be a good buyer. You don't wanna run your ad to them. Another example, if you sold things specifically for men, let's say you sold razors for men and somebody searched for shaving razors or shaving kits for women, you wouldn't want your ads to be shown to women because you don't sell products for women. So you could put in for women or women or something like that and it would keep your ads from running if someone did a search that had that phrase in it. Same thing like for kids, if you're selling things to adults and someone's looking for a certain type of product that's made for kids, like boxing gloves for kids, and you only sell boxing gloves for adults, uh, then you would wanna put that as a negative, a negative keyword because it has a negative impact on your conversions. You don't want your ads to be shown for it. A wares is an old phrase that people use online when they're looking for pirated software to download, or they may put in like something serial number like Adobe Photoshop serial number. Those are people just looking to steal software. So if you happen to sell software, those would be negative keyword examples that you wouldn't want uh, your ads to be triggered for. So you'd want to set those up as negative keywords uh, if you sold software. And then if you're selling, let's say parts for Honda Accords or for some type of Honda, if someone's searching for like Honda photos, they're just looking for pictures of cars, might be you know kids or whoever just looking for photos, they're probably not gonna be a customer that's looking for parts. So that's another type of a uh, negative keyword you could add. If you sold pet products, but you were only selling things to do for dog owners, then obviously you could put in cats. Um, if you sold a certain type of product, um, let's say certain type of toaster oven or appliance or electronic thing of some sort, and if someone searched for you know, toaster oven, but they also search for instructions or user's manual, uh, then those typically aren't people looking to buy, they're just looking to figure out how to operate their own. So these are just you know, kind of vague examples. Uh, there's a lot of different types of negative impact keywords that are out there that you wanna add to your business. Uh, another one here, left-handed, if you only sold, let's say, right-handed golf clubs, and someone searched for left-handed golf clubs, then you would want to use that as a negative keyword and not waste your money showing ads to those people. And of course, someone searches for like cheap and you're selling things that are more expensive, kind of more luxury items, then you certainly wouldn't want your ads to be triggered uh, if someone searches for that word, so on and so forth. So what you're gonna do is you, you, you'll start analyzing your keywords and these long tail keywords that'll happen with four, five, six, seven, eight, nine keywords in one phrase that really detail more about what the person's looking for. Now, those long tail keywords can be very powerful in some of the highest converting keywords, but they also can usually t tell the intent of the searcher and can indicate uh, how they're not gonna convert and how they aren't good prospects. So the more negative impact keywords you can figure out for your business, 
that people are searching for in the whole world of the whole keyword universe that's related to your business and what you sell online, the more you can start figuring out some of those negative impact keywords and adding them uh, to all your ad groups you know, as, as negative keywords, then it's only going to increase everything for you. Your click-through rates, which is what quality score is all about, which is going to get you obviously more volume and lower click costs, but ultimately like your conversion rates. So finally, the other way to use negative uh, keywords, which we're going to use is to shape and optimize an ad group. So we don't just add a negative keyword if it's something we don't want to show an ad to for conversion reasons. So we can set up negative keywords to keep a specific ad group from loading an ad when that keyword is part of the search. Now, we'll do this, and I'm going to show you how we're going to do this with our strategy and everything, but we do this as we move certain keywords into more tightly controlled ad groups. That's our strategy. We're going to start a little bit broad. And when I say broad, by the way, I don't mean broad match. We're not going to use broad match keywords, but we're going to start a little bit wider, so to speak, with some keywords. So we're more open to the flexibility of more possible keywords uh, triggering our ads. And then we're going to narrow that group of keywords down to a tighter group of keywords uh, when we start seeing results. And as we start seeing other searches happen, um, as longer keywords as a part of those keyword phrases uh, that we're trying to optimize for. So the way that we'll do that is we can move, um, let's say an exact match keyword that's converting really well, or even a phrase match keyword that's converting really well. We can move that into a new ad group, and then we can take another a variation of the same keyword, but maybe it has like another word added to it. And we can set that up as a negative keyword um, in that previous ad group. So we no longer serve the ads um, if someone searches for something that contains that. I'm going to show you how all this works. Now, negative keyword match types are very similar as the normal keyword match types. Um, it, but there's pretty much the three, the exact, the phrase, and the broad. So if you don't want... Um, your ad to ever sh show if someone searches for cheap baseball bats, then you would put a negative keyword in brackets, cheap baseball bats. However, if someone does a search for cheap wooden baseball bats, your ad would still show because you're only saying make it negative It's a, if it's the exact match inside these brackets. If you put it in quotes, it's the phrase match. So if you put uh, cheap baseball bats in quotes, if those three words together in that phrase show up anywhere within a keyword where to find cheap baseball bats for example cheap baseball bat discount store online whatever wherever that phrase is still together in a keyword then you're saying don't trigger the ad um, if that's how you have the negative keyword match set up and if you do broad where let's say you just put in the word cheap well then that's that's a little scary because any word that Google finds relevant to the word cheap could be discount, could be inexpensive. So it could be uh, these other synonyms, not just the word cheap. Uh, the ad won't be triggered in that ad group if you have that set up for a negative keyword. So just like we don't want to use uh, broad keyword matching on the keyword side, the normal keyword side, you typically don't want to use broad negative keyword matching on the negative keyword side because that is just open to too much interpretation by Google and it can actually keep our ads from running to some potentially good keywords that, that could result in some money for our business. So we don't want to do that. But I'm going to show you how we're going to use this strategy to shape and optimize the ad groups and how we're going to set up the different uh, keyword match types and then how we'll add negative keywords, move keywords to other groups and how we'll evolve it.